Hey guys, Lucas Garvey here, and today I want to discuss the magic of The Shining. And I think The Shining is a really interesting film because of all of Kubrick's movies, I think it's the one that gets the least representation intellectually. Um, you could argue it's probably his most popular in pop culture, um, but in terms of people actually discussing the themes and what it's trying to represent, I don't get. I don't think it gets nearly enough attention, especially when you compare it to something like 2001 or Eyes Wide Shut, which are fantastic movies. Um, but The Shining, I think, does have a decent amount of depth and uh, intrigue behind it, where I think most people just look at it as a typical horror film, which rightfully so, it is one of the greatest horror films ever made, but I think there's more on the surface. So today, I want to go through it and just discuss the magic of The Shining. So there's a couple of things I want to lay out first. Uh, to begin with, I'm not trying to say that this is all set in stone. These are just my opinions of what I got from the movie. I'm not saying I have some special precognition and knew exactly what he was thinking. I've asked some special notebooks. Um, this is just what I think the movie tries to convey. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And uh, if you don't think my interpretation is correct, no harm, no foul. Also, uh, I'm not delving into any conspiracy stuff. So, uh, no Room 237 uh, chit-chat and no fake moon landing stuff. This is purely just what I think about the story, nothing else. I think it's best if we start with the general motifs of the film, you know, the repeating elements that come up over and over again. And then once I lay all those out, we can kind of circle back and figure out how they all connect to one another. So let's jump into the motifs of The Shining. So to start off with, there's a lot of doctors. This movie really likes doctors. At the beginning of the film, there's a doctor helping Danny after he has his episode. And you know, the end of the picture, um, when uh, Wendy and Jack are fighting, they keep repeating the line, you need to see a doctor, or Danny needs to see a doctor. They keep repeating that phrase, they need to see a doctor. So it's possible that Kubrick decided to just keep mentioning doctors over and over and over and over again. Um, but personally, I've always found that if something gets mentioned more than once, it's probably a motif. Because if something gets mentioned once, then, you know, it is what it is, they move on. Once something gets mentioned multiple times, you really have to have a good reason for the repetition, because otherwise it'll just get bland and boring, right? Because if I say damn now, and then say damn again two seconds later, the second damn is going to have a lot less power than the first damn, right? The swear words get less and less powerful as more and more are used. Similar thing with motifs. So if there's multiple scenes in a row talking about doctors, each one's going to seem a bit more off, unless there is a specific reason to mention doctors so much. So that's the first motif that I noticed in The Shining, doctors. Next up, and uh, I think this is a pretty well-known one, uh, at least it seems like that way to me, um, there's a lot of mentioning of Native Americans. There's a lot of uh, Native American iconography, and they even mention it blandly. They say lines like, oh, this hedge maze was founded on an Indian burial ground. So the Native Americans are mentioned a lot. And that's even seen at the very end of the movie, where you see the photo of Jack at the ballroom party. It's for the 4th of July, which is you know, not directly connected to Native Americans, but is the founding of America, which if you circle back, is connected to the slaughter of the Native American people. So I think those are connected ideas. So something to keep in mind, Native Americans, 4th of July, founding of America, all that stuff is one thing. So here's a weird one that uh, I noticed. I don't know if anyone else, you know, if you guys know this or not, but this movie has a lot of American cartoons. There are so many scenes in this movie where there's just a TV in the background, it's Bugs Bunny or the Roadrunner or whatever the case may be, and they're just blasting American cartoons constantly, right? Um, or even just regular television. There's some scenes where it's just a regular TV show, but tons and tons and tons of television is shown in this picture, and especially American cartoons. This next one may seem kind of weird, but I think a big motif of The Shining is nudity and sexuality, which might come off as weird compared to something like Eyes Wide Shut, which obviously Eyes Wide Shut is so bland about the nudity, whereas it's like The Shining, like there's only like, one or two nude scenes in the entire movie. In fact, I think there was only one, really, the bathtub scene. Um, so why would it be a motif if it only really happens once? Um, I think I, I would consider a motif because there's such a lack of it in Jack and Wendy's relationship. They come up very platonic. Like I, only, I think they only kiss like once or twice in the entire movie. So it's a very platonic relationship between the two of them. Um, and in terms of the sexuality and nudity, there is the bathtub scene, but there's also... And this scene's funny because uh, I was talking to my mom about it. 
<laughs> I just completely forgot that she was even in the movie. I was like, oh, that, that's definitely a scene. Definitely a scene, Mom. Uh, but no, the scene with the uh, the bear giving fellatio to the butler guy. Um, classic cinema. Really iconic, beautiful stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, bear gives fellatio to the, the butler. Maybe it's just random, you know? Or maybe it's uh, a motif that's trying to be represented. Uh, I think it's a motif. So I think nudity and sexuality and even like, you know, bear giving fellatio. It's kind of suspect. So even like brazen, absurdist sexuality, I think is kind of a motif of The Shining. The final big motif that I kind of want to talk about is, and this one's the most obvious, it's the concept of Jack being the tyrannical father. And uh, in a mythological sense, Jack is the tyrannical king who wants to devour the prince. You know, you can see this in the paintings of Saturn eating his son or the crazy kings eating their sons, whatever the case may be. It's the madman who goes insane and wants to eat his son, right? Is the mythological way of putting it. Um, it's, you know, the man who can't let go of the past. It's the man who is too seated in the past and won't let the future propagate. Uh, they even say that explicitly where like the butler guy is, you know, your son, he has the shine. You don't know how great and powerful of a thing it is. We need to take him out. Like, they're almost uh, afraid of the superseded forces that exist in the the next generation, you could say. So, that's obviously the most obvious example. I don't think I really have to go too much in depth to it. But, uh, yeah. So, Jack is the tyrannical father who wants to eat his son and does not want the future to flourish and is kind of pulling to the past. Those are the five major motifs of the picture. And... They're kind of a weird hogpotch of motifs, right? Like we have the doctor, we have American cartoons, Native Americans, nudity and sexuality, and the tyrannical father who wants to devour his son. They don't exactly connect to one another, and it's kind of a, it's kind of bizarre to even try to connect those in your head. Um, so what I think is the best route forward is breaking those motifs down into the simplest possible phrasing, and now kind of elude us into how to perceive the picture's fundamental meaning. So for doctor, this one's pretty straightforward and also very interesting. Um, how, what's the simplest definition of a doctor? You know, if you told a uh, preschooler to define a doctor, what would they say? They would say a doctor is someone who helps sick people. That's pretty much it. I think that's a very fair definition that we can use going forward. And why I like that definition, why I think it's so interesting is that Danny is a doctor. They call Danny Doc in the movie. Danny is a figure who is supposed to help sick people. And in this case, the sick person is his father. And uh, that kind of comes to a crescendo at the very end of the film when Danny and his father are running through the haze, are running through the maze, and uh, Danny ultimately defeats his father. So I'm going to kind of finish that thought later when we talk about the ending. Um, but just keep it in the back of your mind. Danny is a doctor to cure the sick, and his father is sick. So if Danny is a doctor, they call him Doc, he's connected to the motif of being a doctor, and he's helping his sick father, why is Jack sick? Why is Jack a sick man? At this point, we got delve into the Native American motif to get our answer. So maybe I'm going to jump to Shrek a little bit here. But I think this all connects to the Native American motif. And when you look at it through that lens, I think what the movie kind of becomes is the Overlook Hotel becomes a symbol of America. And Jack is therefore the caretaker of America. Now, you could get a bit more specific with that. You could say maybe he's like a political figurehead or the spirit of the tyrannical side of America or a figure of the murderous aspect of America. But I think that's kind of what the film's going at for. You know, he's always been the caretaker. Uh, at the beginning of the party, at, at the very end of the movie, where we see the party scene, it's the 4th of July. So I really think the Overlook Hotel is supposed to be a symbol of America. And I think Jack is supposed to be the caretaker of America in the most violent and brutal aspect. And I think that's connected also to the, the more personal side of the story where, you know, there's so much guilt about, you know, Jack pulling his son aside and dislocating his shoulder. It's a repeated thing in the movie and he has guilt about it and Wendy's not going to let him live it down. 
And I think that's a stand-in for the uh, original American people killing the Native Americans. I think, you know, it's the use of force that went too far and create a very unhappy circumstance. Uh, and I think those are kind of connected, correlated ideas, I think. So Jack is the caretaker of America in its most murderous aspect. And I think the sexuality motif kind of plugs into where, pl kind of plugs into that, because I think it's also a, not only is it the American caretaker, but I think it's also almost the Protestant caretaker, a representation of the Protestant spirit, because he does seem reserved and held back and I guess not sexually actualized with his wife. I guess you could, you could say it that way. Definitely certain Protestant attitudes and is very conservative, you could say. So going back to uh, Danny for a bit. So not only is Danny a doctor, and this is the really cool thing about Danny in the movie, he's a point of singularity of motifs. He's sort of the connection between multiple motifs in a singular character. So not only is he the representation of the doctor, but he's also connected to the American cartoons because obviously he's the only child in the movie. He's watching these American cartoons. So he kind of acts as a singularity point of doctor who cures and heals the sick and American cartoons. So what do the American cartoons represent? What does that mean in the picture? So I think the American cartoons are the inverse of the Protestant attitude where they're almost obscene, like they're smashing each other with hammers and they're very over the top. So I think the American cartoons is a, I guess you could say progressive, I don't really wanna use that term, but a more progressive attitude compared to the Jack Protestant style. So that's the groundwork for the most part, right? So Jack is the caretaker of the homicidal American spirit and not the entire American spirit because obviously he lacks the beauty of it, but he does possess the murderous aspect, um, that which destroys and kills. And, and really, I'm saying America because that's kind of the, uh, the pretext of what the movie uses. But I would say most, if not all, civilizations would fall into this category, right? But yeah, and then Danny is the figure who is the doctor and has to cure and heal. And I think, and you know, like any good movie, it all comes together at the end. And I think The Shining really comes together at the very end of the movie when Jack is chasing Danny through the maze. During that final scene, how does Danny win? You have the forces of evil, the tyrannical father, the tyrannical figure of the past who can't let go and wants to continue killing and maiming and destroying his own son and the potential of the future. And you have the weak but potentially powerful son, the prince, right? Who is running for the maze and uh, really could never survive in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with the tyrannical father. So the mythological battle is set. Now the question is, how do the forces of good win? So pretty much what I think what Danny is doing is he's not only retracing his steps physically, but I think he's retracing his steps in time to, uh, or at least the representation is trying to be said, but he's trying to, to defeat the tyrannical father of the homicidal civilized spirit. He's trying to retrace his steps back in time to a pre-Protestant era or maybe even a pre-American era or you know, just to the past. Pretty much abandon the uh, the Jack figure, you know, that caretaker, the caretaker of America, that this is that. To really abandon that, you can't just keep going forward. He had to reassess, go back, proceed in time to an earlier state in history and then move forward and then really just let the tyrannical figure get lost in a maze and tire itself out. So why I think that ending is so cool is because um, up until this point, the film definitely was maybe too liberal, you could say, or too progressive. Uh, and I'm not trying to get into anything political. Um, but Jack was almost comedically a Protestant, white male, homicidal maniac. He really had no redeeming qualities whatsoever. So you know, if he is the caretaker of America, it's kind of shallow and one-dimensional if he's so evil. You know, this is just my interpretation, right? So what's so cool about that ending is that Danny doesn't win by, you know, even using his shining abilities. Like that would be that would make the film terrible, I think. If he used his shining abilities and 
was on some new frontier, and that's how he defeated his father with his next generation abilities, I think that would have been very sour and lame. Instead, he has to take a conservative approach, which flips the whole movie in my mind to, oh, we got to backtrack and rethink our steps and rethink how we're going to do things and then move forward, right? Um, so that's why I really like that ending. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to comment on to whether every, because I think the film's fairly a, is fairly political, so I'm not going to comment on whether or not I think every single political underlining tone is accurate or not, but it's all interesting nonetheless. I think the film was, I think the film's very terrific. I think the ending is so cool and how it brings all the motifs together and how Danny um, usurps the father pretty much by not continuing blindly into the future, but actually going back to a state before his father even existed and then jettisoning out and kind of taking an own path in a early state history and proceeding forward from there and not really having to have the baggage of the father, so to say. That was sort of his answer to the question of, you know, underlying guilt or the um, underlying guilt or anything like that. So that's pretty much all I had to say about the movie. Uh, obviously, you could talk about The Shining for hours and hours and hours, but... You know, I just watched the movie a couple nights ago, and those were some of the big major thoughts that I had coming out of it that I thought kind of interesting. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. Maybe leave a comment about what your thoughts of The Shining are, what you think, if you think I'm wrong or right, or etc. Leave your comments about anything. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day.